Hello everyone, my name is Tim Jeffries, and uh, today I wanted to take a couple minutes to go through our latest release of PDF Compressor, which is version 8.0. Um, today's demonstration and overview is really going to be geared for our C-Vision customers who have grown accustomed to the look and feel of the C-Vision PDF Compressor, and really just kind of give them a quick overview and introduction into PDF Compressor 8.0, get a better understanding of how the software looks, how it behaves, how to run some simple jobs using the software, and also get an understanding of some of the new features that have been added to this version of the software. We're very excited about the version. Um, since C-Vision was acquired by Fox's software back in August of 2017, our developers have been working diligently on integrating and enhancing our PDF compressor to be the product that you're about to see today. So. I'm going to just quickly go through uh, setting up a job, walk through some of the settings, get you used to basically where the existing settings are within the software, and also go through some of the new features just to give you a better idea on how the software works and how everything functions. So this is the user interface of PDF Compressor. Um, the whole idea is that we could have a limitless number of jobs available, and these could be batch jobs, they can be watch folders that are set up, they could be um, job ticket setups, really whatever you need it to be. But it, the idea is that you would create new jobs and you can simply do that by adding one here by right clicking this section of the software. You can also run our quick setup wizard and add a job that way. And this is very similar to the quick setup wizard that we have in version 6.5 and 6.6, .6, which you are I'm sure very accustomed to. It will ask some simple questions about the documents that you want to process, if it's a directory of files, what the images look like, if they're Microsoft Office documents or emails, which are new features in this version of PDF Compressor uh, versus the old versions of uh, PDF Compressor that you're used to. We can now process Microsoft Office documents, convert them to fully text searchable PDF files. I'm not going to go through this in, in greater detail, this particular piece, but I will run a quick job and just walk you through some of the settings so you have a good understanding of where everything resides. So I set up this folder before, and it's a very simple job. Um, I just named it test files. And you can see here, these are the settings that we're gonna go, go through. It's very similar to the left nav bar in P version 6.5 and 6.6 .6 of PDF compressor. So I've set up a directory that's just a simple uh, folder on my desktop, and I have a couple files in there. Um, you can set this folder up as a watch folder and check it every 30 seconds, every few minutes, basically to process the documents and place them in a separate output folder. Um, I'm going to run it as a batch, so I'll manually run the job just to give you a sense of how everything works. You have the ability to include subfolders as well, and we can replicate the recursive structure of that subfolder. You can also process documents that reside on an FTP location. Um, the input file formats that we can process include our image PDFs, standard PDFs, TIFFs, JPEGs, really all the file formats that we're used to. And one of the new features here that we're going to go through today are some of the born digital options that we have available for processing. So we can process Microsoft Word documents, Excel, PowerPoints, emails, really quite a number of document types that we can now convert into PDF. I always will recommend that for PDFs that we will rasterize those documents to really get the best compression ratios and OCR. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you can select never or automatic. The automatic feature is very nice for hybrid documents. So if you have something that has some electronically generated formats and text in there, um, we won't overwrite that. So it basically will maintain that accuracy and allow the files to process a little bit faster. That's a nice new feature that we have available. You have the ability to also add extensions to the file types here um, for our emails and board digital files as well. And then we have some advanced input options specifically for PDFs. If there's passwords, office documents, you can decide what sort of layout you'd like to process. And then we also have some blank page detection available here as well. Our output file, I've already set up. It's just a, another folder right on my uh, on my desktop here. You have the ability to overwrite existing files that reside in there. You can write it to an FTP server if necessary. We also have added a number of different output file formats uh, versus what you've seen in, P in PDF Compressor versions 6.5 and 6.6. Um, specifically, we now have every version of PDFA available. Um, we previously had PDFA 1A and A1B. We now have all the A1s, A2s, and A3s available. We can also output and decompress files to TIFF, JPEG, and PNG if necessary. Uh, for the purpose of the demo, I'm going to output to PDFA 2U. 
You have the also, also the ability to split your output files if necessary. Also, if we have barcodes available, we can split on the barcode, which is a nice new feature available with this version of PDF Compressor. Um, and you also can rename files. You have some email conversion options here as well. I like to go with the default conversion, which will append attachments as PDF pages for the documents, um, but you can choose to ignore attachments or really specify how the conversion is going to work here as well. For the image pre-processing, we still have all of those settings available here. Um, we can clean documents, despeckle documents, um, smooth out images, you can do color reduction, smooth out your images for color and grayscale versus just by tonal, right? And we have color inversion available and we can do some cropping here as well. OCR is automatically enabled. Um, similar to version 6.6, .6, we have three different analysis modes. Um, I typically will recommend balanced. Um, it is the really the best combination of accuracy as well as processing speed. Uh, we have a large number of languages that are available. I think it's over 120. Uh, some of the newer languages that we have available include Arabic as well as uh, Hebrew and a number of other Asian languages that we have available as well. We can also output additional formats. So I had already gone through the PDF formats that we can output. We can also output um, the OCR text layer as, as text files. Uh, we can do um, rich text format, Microsoft Word, WordPad, whatever you might need. And then if you have a something in bounded boxes, you can do Excel, general, standard Word, and a variety of different XML files as well. Now, we now have a new section for barcodes. You can check off here and detect barcodes, and then we can edit the actual barcode profile. So if you have a QR code or other types of 1D or 2D barcodes that you would like us to process and action, basically name the files based on the barcode or split the files up based on that barcode, we can now do that for you. Our compression options are also here. Um, I typically will recommend going with our standard default compression options. We've done a lot of testing here and we found that maintaining a medium balance of quality will really yield the best compression ratios as well as maintenance of the image fidelity. Um, but if you need to increase the, the compression or decrease the compression, you can sim very simply just scale it up and down right here. Okay. Um, we also now have the ability to embed some different uh, things in the actual documents, right? So if you wanna embed metadata, you can do that. Bookmarks can now be added. OCR, OCR results can also be embedded. We have some different post-processing options. Um, we can rename files, overwrite existing files, um, keep the inputs, delete them, move them to a different location. For the purpose of today's demo, I'm just gonna keep the input files. And then under general, we just have some general settings just for job priorities. Uh, this is also a new feature where we can determine if there are higher priority jobs that are need to be processed faster than some of the other priority jobs, right? Since I'm only processing one job, I'm going to have just a priority of five, but if I had five different ones, I can have a priority of one all the way down to five, okay? So before I run this, I'm just gonna show you some of the files that I'm going to process. I have a number of different JPEG, TIFF files, Excel documents, Word documents, and a few emails here that I'm gonna to process today. You can see them all right here. And then I have my output file folder here. Um, I haven't processed anything yet, so we'll start that now. And uh, you can see the uh, the general results. So when I hit start, you can see that everything is going to start processing. And this is a breakdown of the cores that I have on my machine. I have a quad core machine, so I can process four documents concurrently. Um, you'll see that it will go walk us through all of the phases of, of processing, whether it's OCRing files, converting docu documents like Word documents to, um, to PDF or whatever it might be. All of that can be selected right here. All right, so now it looks like this is starting to finish up here. Give me one second and I'll show you the results. Okay, so these are our output files and these are some of our inputs. And you can see here some of our files. So let's take a look at just some of our, uh, the Word document that we started off with and I'll show you the resulting PDF as well. 
see this was our Word document, and here's the PDF here. See that it is PDFA compliant, and you can see everything in here is fully text searchable. You can search on anything within that file there. Uh, same holds true with some of our other other file types here. You can see some of the compression ratios and everything. The files here that we started out with, they were about 19 megabytes. Now we have a file folder that is about just one megabyte. So pretty significant compression um, that you have here. And um, that is pretty much it for this job today. Uh, please feel free to, to reach out to us, um, reach out to our support group. I encourage all of our users um, who are active on maintenance to definitely upgrade to this latest version. You're going to get a, a lot of new features um, and a lot more out of, uh, out of your use of PDF Compressor. And I thank you to, for watching today and uh, look forward to working with you in the future.